like air. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of the Business Buzz. My name is Marty Kina and I am sitting in for our regular host, Jeffrey Sherman. And it is my pleasure this evening to be sitting here and interviewing a couple of band members from the Screaming Eagle Band. To my far right, I have Tim Britt, who will be sharing some of his talents with us a little bit later on. And to my immediate right, I have biker Mike Turgeon, uh, who has his own story in relationship to his involvement in the band. And uh, my first question in regards to the band, gentlemen, is the whole idea of branding. You know, when you put a product out there, uh, it's very important to get the customer to understand where you're coming from. When you guys came up with the band, Screaming Eagle Band, I'm getting an image which is kind of cool in my head. What were you looking to capture in that kind of imagery in the branding of your band? What is that branding trying to tell people about your music and what you're trying to provide them entertainment wise? Um, basically, uh, I came up with the name uh, when, we, when I first started the band about nine months ago. Um, I came up with the name Screaming Eagle Band because I am a big Harley enthusiast. Um, I like to ride. Um, and I, I did like the, the performance line of Harley Davidson. I like the name Screaming Eagle. So I kind of, um, you know, took a little bit from that. And um, I also wanted to portray the name Screaming Eagle Band because I'm a big Southern rock fan. Okay. And um, I thought the Screaming Eagle Band, with, you know, um, if you go back to the old Eagles album, like with the wings, the Aerosmith, Get Your Wings. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of took some of their concepts um, and we made it our own. Um, our, our drummer's girlfriend, Jeannie Rolston, did the design for us. So Very I want nice. to give her props for that because she did do the logo for us. Okay. And um, did a great job. And she did, you know, I, I'm, I was, couldn't be more pleased with the final product and everything. So there was a lot of thought going on behind this. And yes. So and what is the image that you're trying to portray with Screaming Eagle? You talk about Harley. A lot of people give that an edge kind of look, a hard edge per se. American. American. American, good old down, you know, rock and roll. American rock and roll is really what it comes down to. Okay. You know, and I'm proud to be American. And now it's more than just yourselves in the band, I would assume, correct? Yes, there's three other members in, besides me and Timmy. We have Andy Winters on the drums. We have uh, Mr. Carl Ricci on the guitar. And uh, J.R. Roberts on the bass. Nice. And, uh, you know, when you talk about bands and you look at bands in the past, there's always been this surreptitious kind of path that people have gone on to kind of come together. Uh, how was it that you guys have all come together at this point in time in your lives to come up with the Screaming Eagle Band? Well, got a pretty uh, long history. I was doing uh, late 80s, early 90s. I was with the Blues Express. And we were uh, sharing the stage with people like Johnny Winter, James Cotton. Um, Johnny used to ask for the Blues Express when he played Toad's Place. Mm -hmm. So we did, uh, that was blues and blues rock. And that's um, legendary. Those folks are legendary. Yeah, like a ZZ Top kind of vibe. Yeah. And I moved forward to uh, be in an alternative, a couple alternative acts. We got looked at by Atlantic. We're doing showcases. And then from there, I, uh, interestingly enough, I ended up in a band called Tommy and the Rivieras. Yeah. And this was the band, um, they would be, this is I think their 51st anniversary. They're the band that opened up for the doors the night Jim Morrison got arrested down there. Down in if Miami? If you've ever seen the movie, uh, The Doors. Sure. Tommy and the Rivieras. I was a big was Doors fan. So, so the singer kept that band together um, and gave me a call and said, you know, so I, I spent quite a bit of time with those guys. They got a Christmas record coming out, and um, it was a mutual friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And then, basically, I could take over from here. Um, I started the band with um, my other guitarist, Mr. Carl Ricci. Um, I started it, and we formerly had a member called Gene Donaldson, who was a, basically, he's, what well, we say is a guitar legend around here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. He's played in the Motown Review. Okay. Um, and that's who I started out with, was with Gene Donaldson and Carl Ricci. And um, we, I had a concept that we were going to do an acoustic show, acoustic thing. And uh, then we dis I decided it just wasn't powerful enough for me. It was missing what I really wanted. So that's when I hired uh, J.R. Roberts and Andy Winters, and they came in, and we formed the Screaming Eagle Band. 
because before that was this biker Mike and the Screaming Eagle duo. I see. But I didn't want to have that biker image because I am a biker friendly guy. Yes. Not an MC club member, you know. Um, so we, we started going out with Gene and Gene was involved in a lot of other projects. So eventually Gene bowed out because he couldn't play enough shows. Okay. And through work, I met Mr. Mark Fisk, who is the singer in Tommy and the Rivieras. And uh, he introduced me to Tim. And uh, it was just basically chemistry was crazy right off the bat. Timmy's a very talented and gifted musician who I am so pleased to have in the band. Well, we'll have a chance to get a taste of that in a, in a few minutes. But, you know, a lot of our audience uh, are youth and, you know, they might be interested, you know, listening to a band uh, on the Business Buzz this evening. So if we could just go back in time from your own timelines um, and talk about the development of you as musicians and maybe some of your early influences. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we seem to think that we've heard in your initial introduction that there's a bit of an itinerant lifestyle when it comes to being a musician. You go from here and you go from there. Maybe you could speak to the youth, some of the younger people who might be in a band, who might be interested in picking up an instrument, what are some of the things as you look back at what your development was like that you might give them some keys to, you know, focus on and, uh, you know, so they can move forward maybe in their own careers? Well, I can say, you know, from true experience, music's been really, really good to me. One of the things that it helps people if you're talking about younger people, um, you know, it takes a certain amount of discipline to learn lyrics very true you know it takes it, you know you got to practice it's not and you know i mean a lot of people when they start out they want to be a professional athlete you know and i'm no different um but i realized i probably wasn't going to be running for the detroit lions you know mm -hmm. so um <laughs> not when they had barry sanders <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you know but i really like music um and i like bands like kiss you know, Aerosmith. Now, would you listen to bands and riffs and then try to mimic them? Oh, there's absolutely. A, That's there's the story out. of, uh, you know, um, the, the blues, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan would listen to Hendrix and then try yeah. to mimic. And he'd Hendrix be... was a big, real big one. And the thing is, he was just like Hendrix, man. Everything he did was cool. The way mm -hmm. he sat down was cool. Sure. But I no mean, one, that's so... at a whole nother level. But the whole idea of listening and mimicking is okay. Yeah. Not everything yeah, has to be original. Yeah. I mean, I'll never forget when I was, you know, probably about eight or nine years old, my uncle, who's passed away now, but um, he introduced me to Elvis Presley. Okay. You know, and that's when, for me, the love of rock and roll was through Elvis Presley. I mean, I used to sit around and, and mimic him and, 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 you know, and sing to my parents and try to act like Elvis and do the pelvic moves and the whole nine yards. Right. My, my love of singing was, was started at such a young age, um, even though I didn't develop as a singer later, um, didn't know I could sing until I was a later age. Um, but, you know, bands coming up, and then I became a huge KISS fan because of the makeup and sure. the whole concept, you know, it was great mm -hmm. for kids, you know what I mean? It was something that, you know, you could get lost in. You know, then the Southern Rock scene came along, yep. and I got a chance to meet Ricky Medlock of Blackfoot, and I was backstage with those guys. And just being a fan of music for so long, and, and being around these such talented and gifted people, mm -hmm. uh, it just gave me the urge to want to do this. And the, the thing that I heard originally was it takes practice, it takes dedication, it could take years, I mean, to start to build up the strength in your hands, There's to nothing muscle easy memory per se. about this business. Mm -hmm. if you're, Everything if, is work, hard work and dedication. You're talking about branding and business. Seeing this is a business show. Correct. Um, you know, when you think about a band like KISS, their image, their music, it all works together, okay? And the Screaming Eagle band, we're, um, just, it just happened organically, you would say, that we, the kind of guys we are mm -hmm. works with the type of music that we write. Right. We'd like to play a song mm -hmm. now. Um, and, you know, the audience that we attract is a lot like us, you know? Yeah, sure. basically it's people... You know, I mean, we, we, we did play a good college bar the other day and um, down at Stores Pub 32. And I'll tell you, the kids were very receptive, mm -hmm. you know, to what we were doing. And it was great to know that we can reach an audience that is, you know, 
opposed sure. to 20 years younger than us. Right. But the music then speaks to them and the, the kind of background that you were just speaking to sort of morphs through your music that exactly. they can relate to. You, you got to be real. You know, you got to be yourself. You got to mm -hmm. be real. Because I mean, if, if you're trying to, um, you know, if you're trying to do something that you're not, you know, people can pick up on it. Okay. You know? So, um, Tim, what, what, do you, what do you think the, the folks would like to hear that would be representative of the kind of music you guys present? Well, I wrote a song called Mississippi Mud, and okay. um, we're going to do that now. It's a classic tune. Taking my time out on the ride with the cutie from the party next door. Out on the run, having some fun with the baby with the bar on the floor. Told you she sure is fine, yeah, got a total to a real good time. And now we're headed for a party and a bar fight tonight. Everything's gonna be alright. Mississippi mud and moonshine and cornbread are things that are dear to me. Mississippi mud and a barbecue sounds like the place to be. If you think I'm gonna change and rearrange, you got another thing coming to you. Cause where I come from, we have some fun and so should you. I got an Indian trike and a Harley bike and a wallet that's full of green. It's a beautiful day and the sunshine bright. Yeah, fun like living the dream. When night rolls around, we'll be going to town. The party's gonna be just fun. So hand me my glass and a moonshine flask. We won't quit till we see the sun. Mississippi mud and moonshine and cornbread are things that are dear to me. Mississippi mud and a barbecue sounds like the place to be. If you think I'm gonna change and rearrange, you got another thing coming to you. Where I come from, we have some fun and <clears throat> so should you. Yeah, we're gonna kick back just a little bit here. Hey Tim, what do you say they're gonna fetch us another beer, huh? Yeah, for right. sure. <laughs> Come on, honey. Sit right down. Mississippi mud and moonshine and cornbread are things that are dear to me. Mississippi mud and a barbecue sounds like the place to be. If you think I'm going to change and rearrange, you got another thing coming to you. Because where I come from, we have some fun, and so should you. <laughs> wow, terrific. That is Thank awesome. You. Oops, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> what a great, you have a strong voice. Um, and you said it, you came to that late in your discovery of your yes, talent. Yes, I didn't know I can sing till three years that ago. That was awesome, Tim. You really got a command of that neck. Thank That's you. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so it came to you late in the shower. Where, how did you find that? Um, it, it, <laughs> it's so funny because about ten years ago, actually, a friend of mine, Mr. Danny Collins, who um, is a local guitarist from around, um, had he heard me sing, and um, you know, I said, "Dude, you sound pretty good." And you know, most of the time, your friends sure. tell you you suck. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, I like, yeah, you're pulling my leg, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, he said, "Dude, you sound good. You should come down and, and do a couple songs." So I went down and I did a, a, a couple cover songs for him. And uh, next thing you know, they asked me to come up and do a show. Um, but I never really did anything from there on. And then about six, seven years later, former members of Sinus Galley um, invited me to come up and do Good a sh show with them from at the South End Festival in Hartford. Okay, sure. Um, I went up, I did a couple songs with them, and that was it. I was bitten. I was determined to get into a band. But the problem is, at the age I was at at the time, not having any experience, nobody wanted to hire me. You know, I'd go in, do the audition, and maybe know one or two songs, but they wouldn't give me the time to learn the songs. And finally, a band um, called the Green Label Band gave me my first shot, um, took the time to let me learn the songs, and um, got in with them, was with them for about a year and a half. We had a mutual split, and um, I, I just had to keep going. And that's when I contacted Carl and Screaming Eagle Band all started from that. That's tremendous. It, it you know, I, I got to say, um, as far as of this business, uh, if, you're, 
if it's what you're about and who you are, uh, this business chooses you. You don't choose it. Like, it's almost like, like in any art. You know, artists that are visual artists would probably say the same thing, that it was something that was organic and that they needed to express themselves in whatever manner it was, whether it was in pottery or, or music. And uh, mm -hmm. how did that change you? I mean, has music oh, changed lot, you lot. as people? Sure. I was, um, I went to Avon Old Farms for a couple of years. It's prep school. Mm -hmm. Right around and, the corner. And the first year... Um, you know, I mean, I was waiting on tables. I had to do all kinds of stuff to have a scholarship. And I had started playing guitar. And the first year, you know, it was uh, away from home and all that stuff. And I was the youngest kid in my class. And had a couple friends, but not a big deal. Went home that summer, learned how to play guitar. Came back, and it was fantastic. I got with this guy who could uh, also played guitar and sang. And then we started doing gigs at... Uh, at Miss Porter's girls school oh. and next thing you know girls are calling <laughs> up man, it, and it was you it know opened up doors hey anything to do with girls I guess huh? that's right <laughs> well, girls and rock and roll they kind of go bad hey, hand you know in hand something? I'm not complaining it, 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 it's a lot of fun you know I, we've met a lot a lot of wonderful people playing out I mean and that's really what it comes down to people is um is appreciating your fans because if it wasn't for the people that come and see our shows yes we are nothing now you have a number of shows planned here in the region yes as a matter of fact we have some upcoming shows um we got this upcoming saturday night we're playing down at uh, jay's crab shack that's april 20th. april 26th yep and then we got may 3rd we're actually playing at the summer's lions club um or at the shallow brook equestrian center okay. which is an outdoor gig from four to eight which is going to be a, hopefully we have a beautiful day and it's going to be awesome and then we have a couple more dates on um, may 10th we're playing at aj's oasis out in meriden may 11th we're playing in winstead at the brass horse so right in the general central connecticut kind of area people could find you most every weekend at this point. Yes, I'm and they can at visit calendar. our website at, um, you know, ScreamingEagleBand.com. And that's S-C-R-E-A-M-I-N. Screaming. Screaming. Screaming with no G. Without the G, because we are word. screaming. Yeah. ScreamingEagleBand.com. <laughs> yep. Very nice. Yep. Yep. Do you have another number that you want to share, or was that it today? Um, yeah, I can do. I got one. That we're... This is one that Timmy just actually brought to me today. Um, before we came so down, and I thought it was great. Here. And he's going to do the, do the lead vocals on this one for today. Eventually, we'll bring it into our Screaming Eagle Band mode. There you go. I give you my call on the telephone. Calls me up to say, having a little party at Not Make TV, and they want us all to play. We got those hanging out blues. Get them every day. We got those hanging out blues, yeah. We're gonna be hanging out down at Nutmeg TV, brother. <laughs> got Triple B, Business I Buzz know Blues. I tell you, yeah. I mean, how to spend your time. Yeah, this is what's nice about the blues. Always be productive you and know, things will turn out lit. fine. But not us, we got those hanging out blues. What do we got, Mike? Yeah, we got the hanging out blues. Me and my boy, Mr. Timmy, we gonna be hanging out with the blues. Terrific. <laughs> you know, what I love so far in those both those pieces, you've got some, you know, the blues, which is totally linked to the rock and roll scene. You had R&B and country kind of blended into your previous song. So, you know, our listening audience, our viewing audience, obviously is understanding that. But going back to the kids, you know, just learning those first few chords and just having some fun with your friends, with the lyrics, you know. You know if you had a special definitely. project at school, yeah. you know, maybe get permission from your teacher to write a song about the data instead of not just having and to write a report. What really makes a lot of the best songs out there that for me is songs that I can relate to that are true life stories mm -hmm. that happen to people in their life. Yep. And it's not always the same meaning for everybody. One set of words can mean 20 different things to 20 different people. Right. But if it makes you feel emotion, and mm -hmm. that's what it was for music with me, is the emotion I feel out of people's lyrics and just the music. You become a wordsmith. 
and start playing around with it? Do yeah. you sit around collectively in that regard, or do you pretty much hold to We've one actually, people? Actually, um, we're going to have a third single that's going to be coming out. We have our, our next single is called Modern Day Outlaw, which he came up with the, the, the title on that one. And then I came up with the title of going to be our third song on our EP. It's called Smoking with the Preacher. Terrific. You know? some, some great imagery just in the... Uh, in the titles, and so that would certainly draw people in to want to listen to you. Now, you know, online, have you put anything down where people could actually listen to a piece, like on an MP3 or? We you know, actually have um, one video back in the day, and um, this is the only video we have on YouTube right now. Somebody posted it, but it actually wasn't a bad video. The sound quality is not too bad, mm -hmm. and we had at the time a special guest appearance from Mr. Jimmy Bell. Oh. who is um, a member of House of Lords, who they just came back on, off their European tour. And um, he's a member of Max Explosion, which is a big popular band around here right now. Right. Oh, we're re we're recording original. this album now. Matter of fact, um, we'll be in the studio tonight. Yeah. yeah, so if they if they do want to hear a track that, you know, one of the Screaming Eagle Band songs mm -hmm. on YouTube, mm -hmm. it's under Screaming Eagle Band. Now, there's been a lot of, you know, we had Big Al Anderson come out of uh, the greater Hartford area back in the day. Uh, you know, we still have some really noted kind of performers coming out of the region. What is it about Connecticut? You know, people wouldn't, wouldn't think that Connecticut is an arts region. How, are you finding support? as artists you know to to be creative uh is connecticut fertile in that regard we are right i you know from from the, from our point of view the, the band our band itself i mean people have been really receptive to what we're doing mm -hmm. i mean when we play our song out in the bars and uh, the local clubs and you know private parties we do our original and ge people genuinely mm -hmm. love it they really do and they get up and dance to it yeah and they, they automatically assume it's um well i know that song i've heard that song before and that's great that people can you know ca make catch the riff make the connection with it that yeah. that quickly because and then when you tell them that's our original they're stunned yeah. they're stunned yeah. you know because we course, gotta have good material if you're playing other it, artists you know their best tunes Sure. They recorded their number one hits, you'll and you're going to drop one of yours in. You'll be and then you'll also be doing your own stuff. You know, stuff. your thing has, it, mm -hmm. it better be, you know, right. pretty good. Because normally or, when you're up there performing for your gig, that's two or three hours, correct? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, so yeah. there's a lot yeah. of time We're, we're, up we're there. usually in, a, in the club for four hours, and we play for three. <laughs> <laughs> you have pre- and post-production, I guess you would do. Yeah, the, yeah. Crowd is, the crowds are great. We really appreciate all the people that come out. We appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, um, I can't, I can't, we can't well, say thank you we, enough to Nutmeg TV. We can't, for, we can't say how Jeff, much more pleased we are right. uh, to have you here on this special edition of the Business Buzz. Uh, is there something that we haven't touched upon that you would hope to be able to, uh, to talk about now that we're almost at the end of the show? Is there something that we need to maybe clean up a few corners? Um, not really. We're in pretty good shape? We're yeah, good we're shape. in pretty right. good shape. Well, yeah. we really appreciate... Uh, Tim Britt and uh, Biker Mike uh, for joining us here this evening uh, and the special edition of the Business Buzz. And we encourage you to uh, check them out online so you can find out where they are uh, in the uh, upcoming weekends here in the uh, general uh, Hartford region in Connecticut. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.